Welcome back to Hilal Live. I'm Lukman Shadrach from our Cape Town studios. Thanks for watching on uh, Channel 347 on DSTV. Um, so one of the topics today I thought uh, we would chat a bit more about is the state of our crematoriums in South Africa. There seems to be quite a big issue that's been uh, taking place over the last uh, very good, very few months as well. And some of the crematoriums in Cape Town are currently running, would you believe it, at over 30% capacity due to some of the major setbacks. Also, storing bodies has become impossible due to limited storage facilities available. And even one of our crematoriums here in the Western Cape in the Drakenstein area has actually been closed down due to compliance issues. So I thought, let me invite the Funeral Industry Reformed Association onto my show and uh, chat to Johan Rousseau, who's the chairman. Johan, good evening and uh, thanks for joining us. Lukman, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. I'm, I'm honoured to be on your uh, television show. It's the first time and also to your viewers thank you. Uh, out there. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Johan, uh, for taking the time. Now, the impact on the delays of the crematoriums into you know, the funeral industry, this has been a public outcry for many, many months. How do we get ourselves in this position, Johan? Well, uh, basically, Lukman is, uh, you know, we, we, we've got a challenge with the private and public uh, crematoriums at this stage. And um, it's absolutely as a result of, uh, you know, the compliance not effectively implemented. And uh, we need to take an old government responsible for that because um, we've requested and submitted many proposals to the presidency, to the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, to various political parties, to organizations um, and institutions. We must understand that the funeral industry resorts under uh, a variety of uh, government departments because of the fragmentation of the laws. Uh, so not really any uh, government department really takes full responsibility there. Mm. Although it is, uh, uh, you know, it's resorts under um, the Department of Cooperative Governance and uh, Traditional Affairs, referring to Section 2295B thereof. So it encompasses not only the funeral industry, but crematoriums as well as uh, cemeteries. Yeah. And I think that's where we need to start. Um, and further than that, we also need to uh, just guide the public and the viewers out there that this is a responsibility of each and every province mm. Uh, metro and municipality. So they've got the responsibility to enforce the laws. Um, and it's not only uh, the crematoriums and the uh, cemeteries that is a challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also all, uh, there's about 12 laws that's overseeing the funeral industry. Mm -hmm. um, and government only refers to the Health Act uh, with, within legislation and within your certificate of compliance. And that's why we pleaded for change over an extensive period of time, um, the regulations pertaining to uh, crematoriums is um, very strict. Mm -hmm. And we think that it's necessary, especially in this time uh, where we've got a crisis, that we need to address that and relax certain of the laws so that we can get the private sector uh, to assist government because uh, it seems like they've been having problems since 2011 when we first discussed this um, on national television um, with on, on focus. Um, and it just seems like it's just been increasing all the time. And uh, we know that these are huge budgets. Uh, we've discussed this with Solga. We've discussed this with the Deputy Minister of Cota, um a few years ago. And not really anything has happened since a petition was submitted to the late President Mandela mm -hmm. in 1999, sure. where after we were headhunted as an organization to write the regulation for Gauteng, that has not been implemented. Um, and we've also written the Assist of the Law Reform Commission. Uh, we've assisted uh, uh, many research organizations that's advising the Financial Services Board, Home Affairs, which is basically the key pillars of, of the funeral industry. Yeah. And more than that, uh, we need to look at the health and, health and forensic services as well, right. because there are major challenges 
uh, including in home affairs and certain questions as recently, and I think because we are elevating this publicly, has been highlighted in Parliament already before we met the political leadership and spoke to the political leadership of various political parties on all levels, um, whether it's national or provincial or metro or the municipality. Mm. So we basically at, at, at liberty to wait for them. Although we've got, we've highlighted the problems, we've highlighted this, uh, we need to now provide the solutions to the problem. And I think that's where the challenge lies with all the red tape involved and, uh, you know, political decisions that needs to be taken, but not realizing and taking into consideration that there are major health threats as a result of um, the, the piling up of disease. Mm. We've seen what is happening in, in Gauteng with a cholera outbreak yes. and in um, the Wall Triangle, and it can spread throughout the country. We've realized what happened during COVID um, and the disease was piling up, and there's many um, proof and there are proof, and there is proof of uh, pulmonary diseases and tuberculosis sure. that could be contracted in a mortuary. And yes, um, we know of funeral staff, uh, especially within um, the African communities and your Hindu and your Muslim communities, yeah. where they go and dress their loved ones prior to a funeral. Yeah. So we need to take religion and customs um, into consideration as well because that's where the disease are spread and families do not necessarily have, uh, you know, the, the, the protective clothing or a funeral parlor, uh, which is not relevant by in, in, in the Muslim communities as much as in other communities. But right. I think we need to take that into consideration that we are facing a major threat and it's basically a disaster in the making. Yeah. So let's paint the picture very quickly, Johan, with regards especially to our Muslim uh, customs as well. You do know that uh, we have a, a time frame on when we, we bury, buried our, our loved ones as well. How does this impact um, our community? And, and, and what, have be, what has been some of the challenges uh, and how do we overcome some of these challenges? What, what, what uh, advice would you have for us, Johan? Um, I think, Luan, when we look at your uh, Muslim and the Hindu communities, because uh, they have to, you know, cremate or bury, um, and it's not necessarily the case with your Muslim communities. Yeah. But I think if we look at the standard of cemeteries uh, throughout the country, uh, irrespective of what religion we belong to, it is absolutely a disaster. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've seen media reports of what's happening, and I think we need to find alternative methods um, and that's where we need to engage leadership and your viewers and especially the, uh, the Hindu uh, and the Muslim communities and say, what, what is your preference? Mm. Uh, so we need to have a more broader discussion in terms of uh, the solutions that we've got to offer because that would not necessarily be in favor of certain religions and customs. Um, and that's what we need to do. And, and I think... From my industry perspective, you know, um, being in the industry and grew up in the industry, I've spent more than 50 years within uh, this space and understanding the cultures and the religions and the traditions very, very well. I think we need to have an outreach program, and that's why we want to thank the lady of Cape Town Metro that introduced you to us, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, she's got a, a passion unbelievable and, and facilitated basically the, this discussion with yourself. And she comes from a, a Muslim community. So we need to address and, and, and seek solutions. But to leave that up to government, um, in, in only it's, it's not going to help us. We need to have a broader discussion um, in terms of providing the solutions, even though, um, you know, your Christian communities normally um, do either burials or cremations, and that's where the major challenge lies. But there's also security challenges um, at your cemeteries nowadays. It's not being properly taken care of. Mm. Uh, we've seen media reports where people are raped and robbed in, in, in cemeteries. Uh, we know that uh, funeral equipment is being stolen in, in, in cemeteries. And we need to ask ourselves the fees that the consumer out there 
irrespective of what's their religion or their culture, the fees that they pay towards a, a grave or a crematorium, mm. is that going into a general pot? Mm. Or is, that, is there a different account which is then properly managed throughout the country? Because if that's the case, um, I don't think that we will have the problems that we are currently experiencing within uh, the private and public sector. Mm -hmm. And uh, I leave that up to you. And if there's anything else that you need to know, you're more than welcome to ask me. Uh, absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Johan. Really appreciate it. We chat into Johan Rousseau, who's the chairman of the Funeral Industry Reformed Association, and uh, chatting about some of the concerns and some of the major issues that's been happening around the country as well, especially affecting our Muslim community um, over the very many months. And, and we all know that even during the times of COVID, um, some of the bodies were piling up in uh, some of the mortuaries around uh, the country as well. And the time frame that we as Muslims uh, have to bury our loved ones, uh, that diminishes so quickly because of some of the bottlenecks and some of the issues that's uh, been faced in the industry. We're going to take a short ad break. When we come back, I chat a bit more to Johan about uh, going forward and uh, some of the very uh, very many challenges that they've been experiencing uh, throughout the country as well. You are still listening to Hilal Live. Thanks for watching Hilal Live on uh, DSTV Channel 347. Uh, my name is Lukman Shadrach, and uh, we chatted about a very, very important topic that's uh, been affecting our entire country. And on the line uh, via Zoom, we are connecting with the Funeral Industry Reform Association Chairman, Johan Rousseau. Johan, thanks once again for joining us. Really appreciate it. More than welcome. Thanks, Lukman. My pleasure. So, Johan, um, I think one of the very important topics that uh, we need to cover is uh, the fact that bodies have been piling up. Uh, you know, where does this leave our community? Where does the bottlenecks come in that allows these bodies to pile up, number one? And number two, surely the regulatory body, there should be an ombudsman that has the responsibility to take charge and say, you know what, enough's enough. Let's sort this out. What's happening on that end, Johan? Uh, Lukman, uh, first and foremost, we did a research in conjunction with the South African Council of Churches over an extended period of about four years. Mm -hmm. There is no regulatory authority for the funeral industry, wow. uh, and there is no ombudsman. Although we've been leading the processes, uh, there are certain people within the industry um, and within government that we need to turn uh, towards. Um, because when we did these things, they said that there wasn't sufficient co uh, consultation. But how do you consult with an industry which, they, which there's no proper database, which they don't even know which organizations exist? And we've spoken to the lead organization, but we need to elaborate and highlight this in the public space for once and for all. Uh, the industry stakeholders, which has all got vested interests, um, they have basically stated that uh, they will write an alternative ombudsman in 2016-2017, which was discussed on SAFM. It's now six, uh, six, seven years later, and nothing has still been happening. So we want to ask ourselves, are these organizations only a front for certain funeral companies to continue what they've been doing for many years, in affecting uh, the industry yeah. as well as the members of the public because the public has no recourse in terms of when there is complaints there is no regulator within the operational side of the funeral industry and that's supposed to be done and overseen by um, provinces which is also not in place yeah. uh, we've done the proposals in 2007 2008 in Gauteng that's yet to be implemented, and we've uh, requested uh, questions in Parliament, um, but it's basically just fell on deaf ears. Yeah. So we need to have a one-shoe-fits-all law in place so that we can look at your license and the emerging markets, and that's the way we need to address and amend certain laws so that we create a legislative platform that will enhance economic development. I almost sound like a politician now, but that's exactly what we need. We need to accommodate and protect stakeholders in the process. And as uh, what we've noticed now 
in the media, the pile up is uh, within the private sector and the public sector. Government mortuaries is overflown. Mm. The private sector is overflown uh, at your funeral parlors. And uh, the, the, from a forensic point of view, we have uh, discussed and we've been invited by the Department of Health. We've already had our preliminary discussions with them and we've got the solution to that because we need to take into consideration over and above the piling up of the seas, other aspects, and we've seen that in, in KZN, where the Muslim and Indian communities uh, were in a, in a struggle to get their loved ones released because of certain strikes. Uh, we need to accommodate uh, the emerging markets in a facility which is a one uh, a one stop center, which we are looking at. Uh, um, and, and discussing that with, with certain stakeholders mm. because we need a disaster center which is currently not available in the country sure. and they only rely on funeral parlors. Funeral parlors is under so much pressure as a result of the load shedding, um, as a result of the uh, deceased people piling up that the crematoriums can't handle the amount of deceased and they are not properly planned, they're not properly maintained and that's why we need uh, the, uh, the the private sector to, to and assist us because it seems like government doesn't have the ability to do that. Yeah. But we need to ask ourselves who are managing these crematoriums on behalf of government? Mm. Is that the private sector or is it the, the, the municipalities itself? Because that is taxpayers' monies which is now being um, utilized to subsidize and to fund a company which is in direct competition with uh, the industry out there. And we believe that one of the challenges is that the industry is circumventing them because they will not necessarily uh, support them um, if, it's, if, it's, if they've got vested interest. Mm. Uh, we must understand if a person goes to Kentucky Fried Chicken and he buys his food there, he's not going to... Um, you know, buy the bun from chicken uh, from chicken leak, leak and next door. Um, and that's what the type of questions that we need to ask ourselves. It, what is the influences? Um, is someone financially being benefited out of this? Because once again, this is taxpayers' monies um, that we believe um, should be done by municipalities. And then we've got the private sector that could provide the solutions um, through the country, which has been limited uh, for an extensive period of time. And in particular in Cape Town, it's not only one application that's outstanding. We know of three, four other applications that has been submitted in the past, um, uh, which which has also been declined for some or another reason. And, and we need to ask ourselves, uh, what is the relationship between these organizations or crematoriums and companies mm. and with officials within the department uh, which is responsible and and that's challenges uh, that the political leadership uh, doesn't necessarily understand because it doesn't reach their ears and that's Absolutely. why we are uh, very privileged to have this discussion on national television because Absolutely. somewhere somehow there's a bottleneck and um, we can just blame officials for not highlighting these matters publicly so that political leaders which is already indicated yeah. the uh, support toward finding a solution um, to settle uh, the, the differences or try and resolve the matters. But we can't leave it as is, uh, Lukman, Absolutely. because uh, you know, it's costing the family thousands of rands extra. The funeral parlors has been affected and the industry uh, uh, in total, and we're not talking about only our members, uh, because we are way past the, uh, the the issues about associations and membership because uh, the polit the funeral industry has almost become like a political party. Yeah. Everyone is fighting memberships but not really doing absolutely. anything. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think from our side, together with other stakeholders, we need to find solutions because ultimately the public out there has been affected and individual funeral parlors, which is ne not necessarily members of an organization which they're supposed to do Absolutely. in terms of the Birth and Death Registrations Act. Yeah. You know, Johan, this is such a sensitive time for families. You know, the last thing you want to worry about 
is in ensuring that your loved one, uh, you know, gets a, a proper send off or gets a proper burial or, you know, and also the ripple effect, I would imagine. Often enough, you find bodies needs to be transported throughout the country as well. That's also must have quite a large effect on the industry. Johan, a couple of minutes left. Where do we go through from here? What is the next step? What do we need to do to ensure that uh, we alleviate some of the challenges that we're experiencing? Look, man, um, and once again, the media needs to assist us with this. Um, because unfortunately or fortunately for us, um, we have spoken to political leadership, um, and I'll be expecting certain calls tonight from certain political leaders. Um, it's already been diarized so that we can engage with them. We can't afford any delays at this stage because people's loved ones um, can become decomposed. We cannot uh, expect, as what has been said in the media, uh, that you need to embalm uh, uh, each and every deceased. There's a cost implication. And further to that, there is also religious and traditions Correct. and customs that need to be respected, which has unfortunately not been highlighted within our bylaws. Uh, although it's in our constitution, it doesn't reflect um, necessarily onto communities and to the industry. And I think we need to take that into consideration. So basically, we at mercy of government at this stage, and we request them to speed up their processes because their delays is now affecting the end user, which is the uh, is the consumer, and it affects a multi-billion rand industry, which really can't do that. And that also affects uh, the forensic health facilities because your uh, emerging markets is also utilizing that as a storage facility as a result of ESCOM, as a result of the yes. cost implications. And, uh, you know, they can't afford escalating their prices because we're in an uh, economic uh, decline at the moment. Correct. Um, and people can't necessarily afford that. So we need to place this in front of government we are quite prepared as an organization to assist and guide. We've got the solutions to each and every problem, but we need to implement the laws. We need to find the solutions that we have been providing to government Absolutely. and to political leadership. Yeah. But unfortunately, as you know, Lukman, people are very sensitive, they traumatize, and they don't necessarily want to speak about death of course. Uh, until it strikes. And um, you know, then we are caught with our pants down mm. because people do not even know who is their preferred funeral parlor and whether they are licensed or not. And I think that's one of the challenges that we also need to address because Absolutely. not all the funeral parlors and in the country has facilities that are renting with, from each other because laws has not been amended to accommodate them. Okay. Funeral Industry Reformed Association Chairman Johan Rousseau, thank you so much for joining me this evening. We will touch base in a couple of months uh, to find it a bit more. Keep fighting the good fight, Johan. We really appreciate it because it affects all our communities and uh, all the very best for the future. God bless and thank you very, very much. My pleasure. And that's how we end uh, Hilal live from our Cape Town studio. We cross over to Johannesburg where Faraz Patel and the team uh, takes over until about 7.30, inshallah. From myself uh, and uh, Sohel Barnes on technical duty, have a wonderful evening. Assalamu alaikum.